Yo! Higassin here, and here we go, One Piece, manga chapter 959, called Samurai, and whoo, this was quite a long chapter, at least it felt like a very long chapter, it's one of them chapters where you just keep reading, it just seems to keep going page after page after page, lots of information in this, lots to talk about, I'll try and get through this review in a reasonable amount of time, but when it comes to talking about One Piece, I just love talking about One Piece, so it could go on forever. So let's get into this review and talk about the structure of this chapter. This chapter, it's mostly a flashback chapter. Last chapter, 958, we saw Kinemon and all that. They had arrived at the port, Port Takage, the promised port, and everything was a mess. Everything had fallen apart. Something had happened the night before that something was related to Orochi and the traitor. The traitor that had given Orochi all the information. And we see Orochi with a really smug look on his face and he's like, last night an incident occurred. And this chapter we find out what those incidents were. Or at least uh, a little bit of what those incidents were. We don't find out who the traitor is, but again we get some kind of suspicions again as to who the actual traitor might be. But let's actually talk about what happened in this flashback. We'll talk about Orochi a little bit later on and what he actually did. Because there's some other stuff that happens first. First of all we go back two days. Back to Emigasa Village, and we see Kinemon, you know, going over again the troops and stuff, and we find out where a lot of the characters have ended up in between this two-day gap. Kinemon and that, obviously, and the rest of the current Nine Red Scabbards, they'd obviously gone to the port with Momonosuke and Shinobu. But everybody else, they'd all gone their separate ways. The beginning of this chapter also kind of clears up a little an inconsistency with the last few chapters. We saw previously that Kinemon said that Kaido's forces were like 30,000 strong. And then last week he said it was 40,000 strong. That was a little bit confusing. People were starting to wonder, well, how does he know that Kaido's forces have gotten bigger? Because obviously Big Mum and that have allied now with Kaido. So obviously his forces would be bigger. And people were starting to question, well, why is that? Why is that? Could Kinemon be the traitor? Well, it doesn't look like it. We find out here from Luffy that Luffy has in fact told him that Big Mom is in Wano. So I'm guessing this new revised number is maybe a little bit speculation on Kaido, uh, on Kinemon's part. You know, maybe just guesstimating how many forces Big Mom could be bringing. Maybe some other factors in there. But that is why the numbers are different that Kinemon said in the past as to what it was last chapter. So that just explains it. Luffy is bringing up Big Mom though. When he's talking to Chopper and he's talking to Zoro. And he's bringing up Big Mum because obviously Big Mum's here. But somebody else who Luffy had thought he'd left in Whole Cake Island isn't here. And that person is Jimby. Yes, we get some talk about Jimby finally. And we get Luffy once again confirming that Jimby is officially a Straw Hat member. Finally some good confirmation in the actual manga. It was confirmed in a Vivery card. And we all kind of knew it was. But we just don't see Jimby enough when related to the straw hats we never see him in the cover page images but here we got it in the chapter confirming that he is part of the crew and he's talking to Zoro about it and Zoro is being very welcoming he's like yeah I'm sure he'll fit in so the rest of the straw hats that now are learning that Jimby is part of the crew and that's great to see and it's great to see that Zoro you know he's being accepting of Jimby so I'm really happy for that but we get this talk about Jimby Luffy saying I promised, he promised that he would be here, but he's not here now. And I think all of this is just kind of both a reminder and foreshadowing at the fact that Jimby is coming. We're going to get some Jimby soon. No doubt the fact that it's being brought up here. Could we be getting Jimby finally coming back? We don't get in this chapter, but I'm sure it's going to be something that's going to come up very soon because of the fact that it's being talked about. And what I like about this scene as well is that once again, we get that. Luffy and Zoro bond we get them talking to one another what we've seen in the past a few times we don't see it a lot but Zoro is kind of sometimes like a little bit of a advisor to Luffy you know Zoro isn't exactly the smartest guy he's no Sanji he's not the brains of the crew but instead in times of need Zoro has always given some advice to Luffy sometimes on how to compose himself as a captain sometimes on his thoughts on like how to engage the enemy and stuff and we just get that here Zoro kind of giving a little bit of advice, giving a little bit of reassurance to Luffy and them two, you know, the old friendship. It's just good to see them two just sitting down again, talking and just seeing those bonds between the two. Both Luffy's faith in just talking to Zoro and Zoro's faith in Luffy as a captain. And like I say, accepting Jimby, even though they haven't really engaged that much. Zoro is just like, oh, well, if he's part of the crew, I'm sure we'll fit in. 
I'm happy that he's here. Just prior to that, we see uh, Tengayama, and he has brought out these big treasure chest boxes, and inside are some Kabuto armor, and we get Luffy, Brooks, and Chopper's new 1O merchandise, and it looks fantastic. They are all now clad in Kabuto armor. Brook especially looks fantastic. Can this not just be his default? Zoro's also... <coughs> Zoro? <coughs> Chopper is also looking great. He looks cute in his... Carrot is in the background and she's like, Chopper bro, you look great! Robin's in the background she's like, all of you look cute, you all look like bugs in a typical Robin fashion. And Chopper, uh, what I love about Chopper is, he looks cute in his little uh, chibi form, but you know at some point, he's going to go heavy point. And is it going to be like his hat? Is it just going to transform with him? Because if we do get that, then I want Monster Point Kabuto Samurai Armor Chopper that is going to look awesome. That is going to be like Sasuke's Susano levels. Awesome. That's going to look great. Please, I hope we can get that. Another thing that is obviously going to look awesome when we get it in Wano are the Sulong forms of the Minx. And again, we get a little bit more foreshadowing in this. Like we did with the Jinbei, we've got some more reminders that is also potentially foreshadowing with a lot of the Minx talking about the weather in Onigashima. Onigashima is a cold part of Wano. It's got like a winter island effect. So, Nami's sitting there and being like, oh, it's a cold island, so probably going to get a new costume update as well for Nami. And I'd imagine the rest of the straw hats as well. They've been wearing these for a long time. With Luffy and all that getting these new armors, I'm sure everyone else is going to get new costumes. But the Minx are also talking about it, and they're like, oh, well, the weather doesn't bother us because we all got fur coats. What does bother us is the weather, because it's going to be a full moon on the radar on Onigashima. But if the weather is not on our side, we can't go so long, and we got... The Musketeers all talking about Sulong form. We have Wanda, Sicilian, Consulot, and Giovanni, the Zebra Mink. They're all talking about Sulong form. So I'm pretty sure that all of them can go Sulong. And when they do, that is going to look amazing. So again, a nice little bit of foreshadowing. So we've got Chopper in Monster Point, Kabuto Armor to look forward to. We've got Sulongs, Giovanni, the Zebra Mink, Sulong to look forward to. Jimby coming back to look forward to and one thing that a lot of us have been looking forward to that we got in this chapter was Sanji and Zoro interacting and we get that here when they're talking about the Kabuto armor Sanji's like hey Zoro don't, don't you want to try some of that on he's like nah it'll just slow me down then Sanji's just like are you sure you do have a lower bounty than me now and Zoro's just like ah Emma slash and cuts the cliff in half showing off showboating Nami's like what the hell are you two doing you knew that Sanji has been waiting and waiting and waiting to say that to Zoro great that we finally get to see it hopefully this like kind of banter keeps continuing between the two I'm still waiting for Zoro to bring up his dislike for Sanji going to Whole Cake Island and the fact that Big Mum is here as well you know Zoro did say we don't want to get on the bad side of two Yonko, so I'm sure he's going to bring that up at some point as well. So lots of stuff to look forward to. Also in this kind of little flashback thing, we got Frankie and Usopp. They were saying that they're going to come back after they finish making the ships. They're going to come back to Amigasa Village. And then we head over to Okibori Town. And let's get rid of this for a tiny second. Huh, that's better. Right, Okibori Town. We go over to Okibori Town and we see... Somebody that we haven't seen for a long time who just got knocked out in the anime but he's back here in the manga and that is Holden. We see Holden, he's grabbed the guy and he's interviewing everybody in Okibori Town because, or interviewing, questioning I should say, questioning everybody in Okibori Town because the Witch and Owl Boy is back. And yes, the Witch and Owl Boy is once again out and stealing all of the food. We now know that it can't be... Um, Ashura Doji, Shoot Maru, the Mountain Bandits, because their mountains have been burnt down, and all of them are with the Alliance. So who could it be? Could it be Osuru? Mm, maybe, I doubt it. We do see Osuru here, and she is actually confirming that she knew that Okiku was Okiku Nojo all along. And so, you know, she actually has a little bit of a clue that Kinemon is actually back in the town, so that's good to know. And we see that, you know, she's got a little bit of smarts, and she actually says, like, in her head that she's going to try and trick hold them and basically take them on a bit of a wild goose chase to kind of get the attention away from the rest of the samurai rest of the alliance because she thinks that Kinemon's group is behind it so the witch and owl boy could definitely be related to somebody in the alliance but it doesn't really look like it because of the fact that they are all in one group and they've all kind of moved off we doubt it can be shinobu because shinobu has also gone 
with Kinemon and all that. So who could it be? Could it be somebody at the moment a little bit more unrelated? Or could it be somebody in that group? Could it be Tengayama? Doubt it because he is in Amigasa Village. Otama, Otoko, doubt it because they are also in Amigasa Village at the moment. In fact, we even saw Otama in the chapter. Who else? Hiori. Hiori isn't there at the moment. We don't actually know where Hiori is. She's somewhere safe. So again, and she has connections to the flower capital. And in this incident, in this incident, it is money being taken out of the flower capital. So again, Hiori could be leaning more towards Hiori. But the one I am more leaning towards now is potentially it being Kyushiro because as we've seen in the anime opening there is a very high possibility that he is also a member of the Nine Red Scabbards and at least an ally in this whole thing so maybe potentially Kyushiro which an hour boy could be related we definitely know that it was not Tonyasu because obviously Tonyasu said it was him but Tonyasu is sadly dead so it can't be him so I think now all eyes potentially on Kyushiro maybe Hiyori in the witch and hour boy Right, Orochi's plan. We talked about everything else. Let's talk about Orochi's plan. He starts off just destroying all of the bridges. And everyone's like, whoa, 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 Orochi. Well, we need them bridges. You, you can't just destroy them. And he's like, ah, don't worry. We'll rebuild them afterwards. It will just slow them down for now. Quite a smart move by him. Is it going to work? I mean, I don't know. Frankie is here after all. But still a good idea, so he's destroyed all of the bridges leading to Takage Port, all of the ones connecting all of the different, I guess the different islands really, of Wano all really smacked together quite close, because they all got different weather, islands, regions. So all of the bridges are gone. Then he turns his attention, this actually came as a little bit of a surprise to me, to Port Itachi, and he has blown up all of the ships in Port Itachi. Thankfully we know that Frankie and Usopp are probably all right, because like I said earlier on, they are on their way to Amigasa Village. The minks there though, that awesome giraffe mink and that panda mink. What's happened to them? Not sure. All we see is all of the ships on fire. Poor, poor Frankie. All of his hard work has just gone up in flames. Hopefully they managed to get a few of them ships out of there before they got destroyed. But the fact that Orochi knew about Port Takagi again leads to the fact that that traitor, I think definitely has to be somebody from Amigasa Village. At least somebody in that very close circle to Kinemon that knew about all of the plans, that knew where everybody was. Could it be one of the Yakuza bosses? Maybe, but they all had their own little missions. I don't know if they knew about everything. So I think it's got to be somebody from that summit. Hey! F***ing noise. So again, until we get any more information, I'm still going to lean on the Shinobu as the traitor side. Although it could actually be anyone at this point, at least anybody in that close circle. Uh, also a little point here that uh, earlier on at the beginning of the chapter, Kinemon mentions that they have 4,200 troops. And here, Orochi mentions they have 4,000 troops. So you can see that Orochi hasn't got up-to-date information, but he definitely has at least most of the information that they were talking about in that little briefing that they had in Amigasa Village. So if you thought that blowing up Port Itachi was quite surprising, the next one is going to be an absolute shocker. And that is the fact that the Sunny was on the target list. So I absolutely think it definitely has to be somebody from Amigasa Village. For them to know that the Sunny was there. I mean, the only people that knew that the Sunny was there was Luffy and Otama and the dog, the Komainu. I doubt the dog is the traitor. And I very much doubt that Otama is the traitor. So I'm sure that at some point the Straw Hats talked to Kinemon about where the Sunny is. So could it be somebody in Amigasa Village? It's all pointing there. The fact that Kaido actually knew that. Again, maybe Law, but was it ever brought up that the Sunny was there with Law? Did, did Luffy ever tell him that? Luffy didn't have that much interaction with him. So maybe, but I'm still thinking it's Amigasa Village people. But yeah, the Sunny, we see these bird people, like these uh, gifters that have bird powers. One of them literally has like an eagle's head on his, uh, on his head. And then another one looks like Poe from uh, Hunter x Hunter. They come in, they actually look pretty cool and they... Blow up the Thousand Sunny. Do they blow up the Thousand Sunny though? I absolutely doubt that. Because this is meant to be the ship that's going to carry everybody to the Grand Line. This ship is Frankie's dream. A ship that will sail all the way to the end of the Grand Line. Is Oda just going to blow it up? I doubt it. We've seen the Sunny apparently destroyed quite a few times now. And it never actually has been. I'll be shocked if he blew it up just like this in one or two panels. Not sure what actually happened. Maybe the, the wood that it's made of was too strong. Maybe Frankie had stopped in there and he 
blocked the blast or something. Maybe somebody else was there, came in and blocked the blast. Maybe Jimby. Who knows? We'll have to wait to find out, but I don't think it's destroyed. No way is the Sunny getting destroyed until it gets to the end of the Grand Line. If Oda does that, that would genuinely be quite shocking. Although there could be some actual jeopardy over in Okibori Town because we find out from Kinemon, who is pulling up that ship in desperation with all of the others. Momonosuke is like, don't don't go on to Onigashima, it's suicide. And Kinemon's like, we have to act now. If we don't act now, we're never going to get an opportunity like this again. We got the troops, we got the straw hats, we got the heart pirates, we've taken over Udon. If we don't take on Kaido now, we could never get another opportunity like this. At least not this year, next year. We'd have to wait ages. Potentially it could never come. We have to act now. And one of the reasons why he's also been so desperate is he reveals that Okibori Town has been destroyed. Hold'em, Orochi, they have set the entire town on fire. That is quite shocking. I mean, when Luffy finds out, he fed them people. When Luffy finds out, he is going to be absolutely devastated. He is going to be mad. Why did it get destroyed? Well, like I said earlier on, Osuru, she was going to take Hold'em on a wild goose chase. But it looks like the people of Okibori Town instead protected Osuru and took the blame themselves and admitted the fact that they were eating all of the food and they were kind of taking on the mantle, I guess, of the witch in our boy saying, yeah, it was us, we took all the food. And because of that, they took the blame and they got destroyed. Osuru, life in danger, maybe. I mean, I think a little bit more likely than the Sunny. I hope not. I hope Kinemon has a happy ending at the end of Wano and not a very sad one. So we'll have to see. But this is some good motivation now for Kinemon. He could potentially get a lot more desperate. And you've seen up to now he's very loyal to Momonosuke. But here he was like shouting at Momonosuke. You know, he just seems determined to get on Onigashima and throw his life away. So let's see where that goes. Some good stuff there. And apart from one other thing, that is pretty much the end of the chapter. Overall, a very good chapter. Very solid. Lots of information. I wouldn't say it was as hype as other chapters. And because of that, I'm probably only going to give it a purple tier. I do feel like a lot of the stuff is just kind of reminders and foreshadowing. Reminding us about Jimby. Reminding us about Sue Long. But, you know, it's good stuff. It, you know, it gets me hyped. It gets me thinking. But then you also have other stuff like, oh no, the sun has been destroyed. I don't think it has. The Asuru situation... That is definitely a cause for concern, but the Sunny, I don't think so at all. The bridge is being destroyed, maybe 50-50. I mean, like I say, Frankie is still around. So yeah, I'll just give it a purple tier for the time being. That's kind of my thoughts on the chapter. But one last thing, and one thing definitely to look forward to, and one thing that's going to put a lot of these questions that we have at the moment on hold for a little bit, for an unknown amount of time, is the fact that at the end of this flashback chapter, which is pretty much all flashback, with a flashback in a flashback with the Jimby stuff, we get another flashback of Odin way back before he was even a member of the Whitebeard Pirates or the Roger Pirates. This is back in Odin's early days. We still didn't see his face, but we see him walking down the street and we see that he wasn't a beloved man like he was at the end. You know, he didn't have everybody in 1 0 was, you know, amazed by Odin. We don't have the straw hats crying when they hear a story about him. We don't have. Roger saying to uh, Odin, I'll come with you, and Buggy and Shanks and Whitebeard and everybody loved Odin here. This was when everybody hated Odin. And no doubt we are now going to get into the Odin flashback arc, mini arc, no doubt. I can imagine it's going to go on for one, definitely two, three, maybe chapters, maybe a little bit more, five max maybe. But yeah, I think we're going to get some good Odin flashback stuff. Right back from the beginning, see him meeting Kinemon and everybody. Maybe see Orochi in his youth and how Orochi slowly became more corrupted. Hopefully, and definitely this is what I want to see, when Kaido arrived in Wano. When Odin actually went out to sea and met with Whitebeard and later Roger. Do we get to see Odin's wife in this? The birth of Momonosuke. And most importantly of all... Odin's face. Come on, next week, let's see Odin's face. Next week, for me, it's Comic-Con. So, for three days, I'm out at Comic-Con. That's why I got that hat back whoop, back there. Uh, that's why I got that. I'm going to be Kinemon on the Sunday. On the Friday, I'm going as Panda Man. And on Saturday, I'm going as Niji. I saw my Niji. I was wearing some of my Niji stuff a few uh, reviews ago. So, 
next week it's going to be a little bit tight. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do my live reactions. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do my reviews. The review, I think, is definitely going to come quite a bit after Comic Con. The reaction I'm going to try and do over the weekend, but I'm not sure yet. Anyway, so just next week, things might be a little bit delayed. But I'll be one piece in it up anyway at Comic Con. Be sure to check out Twitter because I'll put some pictures there of my cosplays. And I'm sure I'll put them in my review uh, for next week's chapter as well. A couple of great photos from... The weekend so lots of one piece content to look forward to hey so thanks for watching what did you think let me know about it in the comments below and if you enjoyed my video maybe give it a like and if you really liked it why not subscribe you can follow me on twitter instagram and twitch oh and here's a related video you might enjoy and something more fresh i've been higassin and i'll talk to you next time bye